Making the grade, the NBA.com midseason report cards were released, and these are the highest grades that were available. Uh, looking pretty good. Some we all agree with, some we may question, right? A member at home, you can go to NBA.com if you want to dive into them a little deeper. So, uh, Smitty and Channing, I'm going to ask you this. Lakers, Milwaukee, both got A's. Yeah. I'm okay with it, Great. Right, I think we all checked that one, right? Yeah. We agree. Should there have been more A's than those two? The Miami Heat should have got A's. 100%. Ooh, that's uh, quick. We, we all yes. agree. I mean, <laughs> if you had the Miami Heat in second or third, other than Heat fans, I thought they would make the playoffs. Yes. People were saying, I was like, I think they'll make the playoffs. Yeah. Did I think they'll be second and third at this point, Channing? No. no. With so, rookies. With rookies. Correct. And playing rookies, to your playing point. Big time. And they're playing starting playing big minutes, and none had a chance to be in that rookie of the year conversation. Yeah. And I still think he's second or third. And they're doing it by committee, and they're yes. only going to get better as long as they stay healthy. I wouldn't be surprised if they got somebody to go there, made it just a little trade, got another defender, another 3 and D guy that's going to put them over the top. All right. Were there any surprises for you? Were you disappointed? Did you think that someone got a grade that was too high that they didn't deserve? Oh. Come on, uh, I know you're the teacher, yeah, but you know yeah, what we're talking about, Steph. You the know, 76ers. 76 is not a B plus. <laughs> this no. team for me, I, I, I picked them to go to finals. Yeah, and B plus? No, not right now. Not okay, at all. They don't even. I've watched them a C, lot. Actually, C is C, the highest grade. C minus. C minus for me. That's it's just one for me. You can't have that much talent, and they just are still have the same problems that they did last year. Um, it's just been compounded because now it's like so much more pressure. You know, now they got so close. It's like, what team are they? Are they Embiid's team? Are they, you know, are they Simmons' team? Mm -hmm. Are they going to run fast? Are they going to play post up basketball? Like, who are they, and what's their identity? And when things go wrong, do they look at each other and talk? And I went to the uh, Boston Philly game, even though they won, and they just don't talk to each other in the huddle. It just doesn't seem like they have good communication. And I think also, Jenny, they shouldn't be this bad on the road. But the reason why, oh. even though they got some new players, these are veteran guys, and defense is supposed to travel. And it's you, supposed to be their thing, too. They're long. They should be able to guard. They should be able to win more games that they won on the road. And that's why I'm still wondering where is this going to turn around, even when MBs get – uh, when he becomes back, when he comes healthy. I think a lot of people are wondering that. We talked about the Heat and how much of a surprise they were. A surprise in the West, the Oklahoma City Thunder. B++. Right? Yes. I mean, people thought that Chris Paul was going there to maybe get moved again. I he has turned person. into a leader, and now they're winning. My opinion, Chad. Yeah. Front office had a vision of this team. Yeah. And saying, oh. This guy's the, these guys have messed up our vision because right now there's no trading. Chris Paul right now. There's, we're in the playoffs. Wait a second. Yeah. And I think it's great for the young guys. And I think it's Shea Gilgis Alexander getting a chance to maybe play playoff basketball again. Yeah. Having three guards and is working out. I, I have to take my head off to Chris. Yeah. Chris Paul is doing for these young guys. Other than, I mean, if you look at really their starting lineup, Schroeder's been in the playoffs. Adams been in the playoffs. Chris Paul's been in the playoffs. Shea Gildress has been in, in a playoff situation. So they look Gallinari. like – Gallinari, definitely. So all these guys look like, uh, are they going to work? But it's like they really work. They're mm -hmm. like the underdogs. They don't get a lot of attention, but now they do. Their defense is underrated, and that three-guard lineup, like you said, has been a lot of fun to watch. Okay, so when the season started, everyone knew all eyes were going to be in the city of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. right? Clippers and Lakers. Um, the Lakers, to me, have really performed beyond expectations early. Okay. Clippers have kind of slipped a little bit. What's your opinion? Who do you think has been fulfilling their destiny first half of the season? Let's talk about what your end goal is first. Right. Okay. As long as they're healthy. They have True. nobody that's hurt. True. So that means they get an A, <laughs> right? <laughs> because if they have a total team, when it comes down to crunch time, I'm taking the Clippers. I know okay. the Lakers are playing well, but Anthony Davis has had, you know, his problems. LeBron has had his problems. Rondo has had his problems, right? So maybe if they kind of I mean, you know, load manage a little bit, they will, even though they're not first or second, they're still going to be in the playoffs. And the, right now the Clippers are uh, taking care of their bodies, and they're going to be fresh when it comes to, uh, to the playoffs. And I think the Lakers got off to a better start because right. they had training camp. You had no Paul George at all during training camp, and we had to wait for him, and he's injured again. Mm -hmm. And for I look at the standings right now, well, they're one or two games away from being in second place. Yeah. So I, I would say with Kawhi having low management, I will give the Clippers a team. They're going to schedule by plan. And that plan is to get better at right. the end. And I think the Lakers, yes. And there's nothing wrong with winning. I'll take winning and have some cushion. But to Channing's point, 
when did you start scaling back a little bit and getting ready for the end? And I'm not saying you have to have low management. There's just some games you might sit some players uh, and maybe miss some practices, but you're going to have to start figuring out for at the end of the season because the Clippers are doing it. They're sticking to their plan. They are very diligent with that plan. As you should. All right, gents. Excellent job. I appreciate the breakdown in your opinions. Mike Conley, we were just talking about him earlier of the Utah Jazz. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the rest of the happenings around the NBA tonight on the warm-up.